I'm back, Justine Froker. This is video three of your butterfly classes, and I hope that you enjoyed video one and two, and I hope that you have had, helped, had the adult in your household help you type up your questions in the comments of those videos, and that you're gonna join me live on Friday on Facebook, and I will answer your questions live there. So we've talked about um, monarchs and why they're important, and we've talked about their lives as caterpillars, and today we're gonna talk about their lives to becoming butterflies okay so thank you for coming back i hope you that you have enjoyed this and i've loved some of your messages that you sent me all right so there's me another picture of me with more butterflies on and yes there is a dog in the background it is not a puppy it's just an old little dog behind me he's tiny he's nine pounds his name is bosco all right the answer of the day from the last video do monarchs remember what they went through as caterpillars and the answer is we think so scientists do believe that Butterflies remember everything that they went through as caterpillars, which you've already learned is quite a bit and your mind is gonna be even more blown today. So, and how they test that is they'll shock caterpillars sometimes, just a little bit, not to hurt them, but they'll kind of like, they'll rouse them and get a reaction. And they do that pairing it with like a, a particular smell. So let's say um, with the smell of dog food, just to be silly, okay? And then, as butterflies, they will put dog food around that butterfly and the butterfly will react. So that's why we think that they remember what they went through as caterpillars. So here you can see in this picture, I, this is kind of a review for you. There's an egg, mom lays 300 to 500 of them at a time, like in her lifetime. She'll lay 300 to 500 of them. They hatch out of that egg and that's what we call a monarch larva. And then over the next two weeks, they eat a ton of milkweed leaves and they grow and the, 2,000 times their size, they molt five times, which we talked about. Today we're gonna to talk about the J position and the chrysalis and E close. And then that's what they look like. So they change a lot, just like you change a lot as you grow. All right, so the J position. So after two weeks of eating lots of milkweed, the, the caterpillars will in the wild wander around 30 feet away from the plant that they've been eating on typically to find somewhere safe to go into what we call J position. I keep them in a really big terrarium, so they tend to usually go to the top of the terrarium or sometimes underneath a leaf. And what they do is the silk thread that comes out of their mouth that they usually use to help them climb about things, they will spin a little pillow. It's a silk pillow. And then they turn around and they their rear end, their back legs, they bump, 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 bump until they find that silk pillow and they attach to it and then they slowly let go until they're hanging in the J position. And that's what this looks like. So there's a J position. There's the silk pad that they spin with their mouth. These, this is its rear end, its back legs are attached to it and then it slowly lets go to form this J position. Now, if you were to touch this, this caterpillar, it's pretty fragile at this point because it's starting to go into the metamorphosis process. And so if you touch it or another caterpillar touches it, it's gonna like, writhe around all crazy and crazy and tell you get away from me basically all right so then what happens it go, it starts to pupate that's pupation is this process and that's the process of metamorphosis of a caterpillar becoming a butterfly one fact that a lot of people tend to get wrong is that a monarch caterpillar or a butterfly any kind of butterfly caterpillar becomes a butterfly inside a chrysalis whereas a moth caterpillar spins its own cocoon and becomes a moth in that. So butterflies are different in that they've had the chrysalis inside of them the whole time. They don't have to make it with their mouth like a moth. I like this because I like to believe that we all are born with the, everything that we need. We just sometimes need some extra help and love and support from our friends and our family, just like the monarch caterpillar, okay? So they become a butterfly inside a chrysalis. All right, so here's what that looks like. You can see, doesn't this look so crazy? It's so cool. I'll show you in a, a video in a little bit. So here's that silk pad. Here's its rear end. Its back legs are attached to that silk pad. It was in the J position. And then it's gonna straighten out, straighten out, and it's gonna split that caterpillar skin and zip it up to the top to reveal this bright green chrysalis that it's had inside of it the whole time. And I've got a video to show you of it because it's just too cool. All right, here you go. 
So I know that they're ready to go into chrysalis when their antenna are droopy and twirly like this. You can see they're all spinning, like swirly. And that's when I know it's time for them to go into their chrysalis. And I try to grab my phone to take a video of it because it's just too cool. So it straightens out and it's gonna split its skin and reveal that bright green chrysalis. So it splits behind its head, there's the chrysalis coming out and then its face mask or face cap splits and it's gonna zip up the caterpillar skin to the top and that skin will drop down to the ground. And you can see the other caterpillars in the background, they're just kind of like writhing and they're getting ready to go. They're like working up their energy to split this because that's a lot of work to get that going up there. And that is a healthy chrysalis in front of us. And I'll show you why and how I know that here in a little bit. All right, so its back legs are still stuck to that silk pillow. And now it's got to do one of the scariest parts of a monarch butterfly's path. And I'm going to show you a close up of that. So, this is what we call the cream master. So, you can see, right, that little black stick, it's right here, right there. That black stick is called a cream master. And it's going to come out, and he's got, he or she has got to attach it to that silk pad and it's really got two chances to do it. If it doesn't do it in two chances, oftentimes that chrysalis falls to the ground and breaks open, which is not good. That little black stick called the cream master has a bunch of tiny little hooks on it, kind of like your Velcro shoes. And it's gotta writhe around all crazily for a while to make sure that it's securely fastened in that silk pad that it knit with its mouth. And so that's what it's doing right now. And soon that, that skin will just fall to the ground. And it's kind of crazy. That caterpillar skin is not yellow and black like those caterpillars look. That caterpillar skin is actually see-through and black. The yellow is actually the chrysalis that we can see through it. So you can see also all those little holes. Let me see, where's my, right? See those holes right there as he, as he or she's writhing around? Because I can't tell if it's a boy or girl at this point, as caterpillars are at this point. Those are air holes for air to get in. And again, this is a healthy chrysalis. And I'm gonna show you how I know that. So inside that chrysalis, that caterpillar has become a liquefied, ooey gooey, dark soup. I call it butterfly goo soup. And inside, what we know about it is that there's imaginal cells in there, which basically are cells that are going to be the butterfly eye the butterfly's wing, the butterfly's front leg. So the caterpillar has these cells in them from the very, very, very beginning. And inside that chrysalis, as it becomes this like dark gooey soup, those imaginal cells are all designated and meant to create a body part. And very quickly, I'll be able to see that in the chrysalis. So here is a fresh chrysalis. This is like the skin's dropped. And how I know that this is a healthy chrysalis is that this part right here, is the butterfly face. So see these like ridged long things that kind of loop? Those are her, his or her antenna. Here's her eyes, eyes. Here's her front legs, her tiny front legs in the front. I can't remember their official name. And then <laughs> their proboscis right here down the middle. So as their mom and as a butterfly farmer, I wanna make sure that every fresh chrysalis looks like this because that means that that butterfly is going to emerge healthy. Here's what it looks like in a couple hours. It's this beautiful jade green. And literally by the next day, I can already see the butterfly's wings through it. And notice the gold flecks and this gold line. So we used to think that, that um, the gold was to camouflage it. It's green to camouflage it and keep it safe from its predators within the plant. But now what we know about the gold flex, we used to then think that like, okay, maybe it reflects the sun's light so it doesn't get too hot. Maybe that's big, that's a part of it. But really what we know now is that the, those gold flecks on the chrysalis are to allow oxygen into the chrysalis to help the butterfly, the caterpillar become a butterfly. So you can see this is actually my kitchen counter. So I have a, like 100, 100 I think here chrysalis and I take them out of the terrarium and I hang them up because it's not safe for a, a butterfly to open up 
over eating caterpillars in case they carry disease. So I hang them up here and I just watch them really closely for when they come out. And this is one that is getting ready to come out. The, that jade green chrysalis becomes see-through and I can see the parts of the, the butterfly through it. So here's her wing, his or her wings. Here's its eye. There's its antenna right there. Here's its leg. There's the proboscis is right there. And then you can see right here, I don't know that it's a pop pleat. So these lines at the top, they'll open up, they'll pop open. And that is a sign to me that that butterfly is getting ready to come out of its chrysalis. And that is called e-close. So after two weeks in the chrysalis, the butterfly is ready to join the world. And I'm gonna show you that. I'm gonna fast forward a little bit because it's a little long of a video. So here, she's opening it up. She's pushing open that chrysalis with her, her strong front legs. You can see, here's her proboscis right there. Here are her eyes. She needs to detach her body. Actually, this is a boy. I keep calling her, it a she. This is a boy, I believe. And it's gonna slowly wiggle out and very carefully because it does not want to fall. It's very dangerous for, her, for him to fall down because that would be dangerous for its wings. Boom. See how big and swollen his body is? There's his proboscis, his antenna have come out, and it is a boy. Right there are those, po those pockets, those pheromone pouches. And he's got to hang on for dear life because he's got some really important jobs to do before he is ready to fly away. He's got to, one, pump the blood that's in his body into his wings because those wings, they were really tiny, and they got to grow bigger. And so he's got to get the blood from his body into his wings. He also needs to knit together his proboscis. Remember from video one, that's how butterflies eat. That straw is when they're born, when they emerge, it's in two channels and he's got to knit them together while he's hanging on to that, that chrysalis. And then finally, he's got to wait really patiently for his wings to harden so that he is ready for his first flight. So here's that picture of that first kind of e-close. And then here's a picture of when they first come out. See how swollen his body is? He's got to pump that, that blood into his tiny wings to make them bigger. And you can see this proboscis, it's in two channels and he's got to knit it together with this part of his, his mandible, basically. All right, and so you can see, this is him pumping blood into his wings. And it, it takes, it probably takes, mm, four to seven minutes for his wings to get full size. But then he's gotta wait patiently for four hours. You can see him knitting together his proboscis right there um, for four hours till he's ready to fly. And then when they're ready to fly, they'll like pump their wings and um, fly away. And that's when I let him go. Here is what happens when I let him go. That's a slow release. It's slow motion, so you can see how powerful they are. That's a boy. Do you remember how I know it's a boy? It's those two dots, two dots on his lower wings. There you go. Okay, so that's, that's what I know about monarch butterflies, guys. So thank you for joining me. I hope that you've liked this and you found it helpful. Um, and you can join me Friday, March 27th at two o'clock central on Facebook, Justine Froker on Facebook, and I'm gonna answer your questions live. So remember, in all three videos, have the adult in your household help you to put your name, age, where you're from, and what your question is. And then on this Facebook Live, I will answer your questions. Okay, thanks for joining me. Bye.